By now you've heard of the viral study finding that high LDL cholesterol in metabolically healthy people does not lead to increased arterial plaque progression. We're talking about the new study here titled Plaque Begets Plaque, ApoB Does Not, a longitudinal data from the Keto CTA trial. This is very interesting stuff. I'm sure you've seen the video from Nick Norwitz and uh, obviously Dave Feldman has done a lot of this work over the past, I wanna say starting since 2016 was the first time, maybe it was 2017 when I met Dave Feldman in low, at low Carb San Diego in uh, Southern California. He's been doing this work for a long time, finding that in individuals who are characterized by as a lean mass hyper responder, they have a high LDL cholesterol, a high HDL cholesterol, and a low blood triglyceride and are generally metabolically healthy and lean. In those individuals, it seems, in his anecdotal reports, and now we have this longitudinal perspective uh, year-long study where 100 people were tracked finding that their coronary CT angiogram, which is a, a way to enumerate the degree of coronary artery atherosclerosis or plaque formation, was not correlated over time one year later with the degree of ApoB. I will share with you what was correlated with increased plaque development in the coronary arteries, the so-called progression over time, but it wasn't ApoB containing lipoproteins, which is really going to cause a lot of people either to say, well, let me look at the data. Let me look at the raw data here and see if there's any problems. But I think it's going to cause a lot of mainstream medical doctors to sort of rethink the context and the nuance where we have a better understanding that the context in which LDL is elevated will determine the degree to which LDL or ApoB containing lipoproteins are initiating or progressing the coronary artery plaque in the body. I think this is really important because as you likely know, Many people have extraordinary high LDL levels, but they don't have a significant degree of coronary artery plaque because they are lean and metabolically healthy. So in this cohort of people, the mean LDL concentration was 254 milligrams per deciliter. The mean ApoB concentration was 185 milligrams per deciliter, which is quite high, while the HDL in this cohort, the mean HDL out of these 100 people that were followed for over a year was 89 milligrams per deciliter, yet triglycerides were low, 67 milligrams per deciliter. Now, we're going to continue and dive into this because I think it is just incredibly fascinating. But first, I want to thank this video show sponsor, the folks over at Maui Nui Venison, the makers of the healthiest and best tasting red meat on the planet. Now, this venison tastes amazing with no gamey taste at all. From snacks to fresh cuts, bone broth, and breakfast links, every bite is absolutely delicious and convenient. You can take this on the road with you, which is what I do with my daughter. As you know, she runs track, cross country, and we're on the road a lot. And so we bring the venison sticks with us oftentimes because they have a mix that includes glandular and organ there's heart, there's kidney, there's liver, along with the wild harvested venison. It tastes amazing. It's very nutrient dense, way better than anything you're going to get at an airport or a convenience store and beyond. But I recommend all of the Maui Nui venison. It tastes phenomenal. Again, a stress-free practice, 100% wild harvested deer meat. This is the axis deer from the island of Maui in Hawaii. So you can save by going to mauinuinvenison.com forward slash HIH or click the link in the description below. I can promise you, you will not be disappointed. This stuff tastes amazing and it's really, really good for you. So check it out. But going back to the study, this is a really interesting analysis by Nick Norwitz, Dave Feldman, Matthew Budoff. Uh, and, and so this is really, a, I think, a good understanding because we actually have a, a perspective study here, a one-year perspective study with individuals with extraordinary high LDL cholesterol, as I mentioned, the ApoB and the LDL respectively are 185 milligrams per deciliter and 254 milligrams per deciliter. Most mainstream doctors would freak out and put these people on statins and PC PCSK9 inhibitors and so forth. But at the end of the year, looking at the statistical analysis, what actually was linked or predicted the degree of coronary artery progression was having the presence of plaque to begin with. That was it. So it, there was no correlation with increased plaque progression and LDL cholesterol and ApoB. In fact, six of the 100 people had a regression of their coronary artery CT angiogram plaque score. So it's really interesting. So we have a better understanding here that if one is lean and metabolically healthy, the LDL or the ApoB concentrations are not predicting the degree of coronary artery plaque progression over time. It's actually the 
the presence of existing plaque. And you might say, well, how did the plaque get there in the first place? It must have been the oxidation of LDL and ApoB containing lipoproteins, possibly. Or it could be sleep disorder breathing. It could be insulin resistance. It could have been undiagnosed hypertension, right? Or blood viscosity. There's other factors, which are the very factors that we should be looking at. We should be understanding. And so I do recommend testing your morning blood pressure. I recommend the, the Connect app. I put a link in the description below. No financial affiliation. That's a thing to consider. But prospectively, this study sought to understand what factors predicted plaque accumulation over the course of a year. And those factors, as I mentioned, was the existence of pre-existing plaque. So if you already have plaque, you're more likely to develop more plaque over time. And so we should be figuring out, well, who has plaque and who doesn't? And why do they have those increased coronary artery plaque? Again, even in people who have really high levels of LDL and ApoB, uh, that was not independently associated with plaque. And so this is a follow-up study from this analysis that we talked about, uh, I think it was December of last year, 2024. This, again, was using a cohort of 80 individuals comparing uh, similarly matched cohort. Uh, the cohort of 80 individuals had pretty high levels of LDL and ApoB, and they fit the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, uh, low triglycerides, high HDL. And comparing that to a, a similarly matched phenotype that had low LDL, this was in the Miami Heart cohort, finding that there, there was not a consistent association with LDL and plaque accumulation uh, over time. So in sum, what predicts plaque over time? Well, the baseline coronary artery calcium score was the strongest independent factor that predicted increased plaque accumulation over the course of this one-year perspective study. So now we, we do know that LDL and ApoB are independently linked and causally associated with uh, the degree of, of heart disease and plaque accumulation. But again, it's important to understand the context because, you know, LDL is, we all have LDL, right? You can't just completely obliterate LDL because you, you need these lipoproteins to transport a coenzyme Q10, vitamin K, fat-soluble vitamins, nutrients, cholesterol. You, you need cholesterol uh, to make various hormones and cell membranes and beyond. So we have to have LDL. But it turns out that the environment, the metabolic environment, whether or not you're insulin resistant, whether or not you have high levels of oxidative stress and beyond. And so in People who have low visceral fat, low body fat in general, and optimal metabolic health, it seems that that metabolic milieu is not predisposing LDL to cause the atherosclerotic plaque that it can be enumerated or characterized and assessed quantitatively via the coronary artery CT angiogram. So it turns out that factors associated with insulin resistance and possibly hypertension and sleep disorder breathing can make LDL more atherogenic. And so we should be focusing on that. So we should be looking at insulin resistance in the context of the LDL and asking more questions there. So in sum, if you're a lean mass hyperresponder, meaning that you have an LDL above 190 milligrams per deciliter, you have an HDL over, I think it's 80 milligrams per deciliter, and a blood triglyceride level less than 80 milligrams per deciliter, and you have a pretty low body mass index, I think the median body mass index BMI was 22.5 in this study of 100 people. And as I mentioned, six of these participants actually had a decrease in total plaque score over the course of a year, which is really interesting. Now, there was a, an age-related change. Like, as you know, one of the biggest risk factors for coronary artery disease uh, and having a heart attack is age, right? So as you get older, you do develop more plaque, you know, just like as you get older, you increase your risk of developing cancer and other chronic diseases. So there was a change in the volume of the plaque or atheroma, but that change was was pretty small. It was, it was so it was just 0.8% uh, reflecting that, you know, this disease does occur over time, but again, there wasn't an independent association and a link with the degree of of coronary artery plaque uh, changes over time and ApoB or LDL. So I think the take home here is we wanna optimize metabolic health and I, I can't emphasize this enough. This is very simple, my friends. Walking 
10 to 12,000 steps per day, making sure you're going to bed and waking up at the same time every day, doing some sort of grounding, some breath work and stress reduction practices, not eating processed carbohydrates and processed junk food and sugar sweetened beverages and baked goods because those will increase your blood glucose, increase your blood insulin, increase your blood triglycerides, and that can be problematic. Um, so prioritizing protein, having healthy fats and having an omnivorous style diet are going to be the best tactics that can help to optimize metabolic health, which can possibly or presumably over time lower your risk of developing coronary artery calcification and plaque accumulation. So really interesting stuff. I would very much appreciate if you share this video and then also watch Nick Norwood's video uh, about this study. Share this study. We need to get this message out there because there are so many people who are eating a low carb style diet, who are metabolically healthy, yet their, H, their HDL is high and their LDL is also high and doctors are freaked out and telling people you have to stop eating this way, you're gonna you know, die of a heart attack and so on. And many of these people are, are continuing to eat this way and live this way because they feel amazing. So they're like, well, why would I change? Like you, you didn't say anything to me when my LDL was 100 milligrams per deciliter, but I was, you know, 25, 30% body fat, right? Eating Cheetos. So why are you telling me to change things now when I've lost weight, I feel better and, and so forth. So the context really matters. And I, this is, I think, you know, the, the main message here is in mainstream medicine, it's very sort of protocol driven. If this, then that, you know, if LDL is high, then you take this drug. If, you know, glucose is high, then you do this, right? Um, but the context and the nuance often gets lost because, as well intended as most mainstream uh, practicing physicians and physicians assistants and nurse practitioners are, they have time constraints. They have reimbursements, they have insurance reimbursements, they have Medicare charts, B codes, all these things that they have to do and bill for and document to appease the insurance companies. They don't have time to look at all the nuances. They just see the outliers in your labs and make these recommendations. And so I think context really matters, you know, and this is part of what you know, Barack Obama was trying to initiate with, uh, you know, Obamacare is precision and personalized medicine. Like, you know, uh, we should look at the nuance and the context here. And so the context when it comes to LDL is metabolic health. What's your HDL, what's your triglycerides, what's your, uh, you know, body fat percentage, body mass index, all these things really matter. And it turns out that if your LDL is high and you have insulin resistance and high body fat percentage and so forth, then yeah, that metabolic environment could cause that LDL to have an increased propensity for that LDL to be problematic and initiate plaque. So I do want to thank Nick Norwitz, Dave Feldman, especially uh, Matthew Budoff and others for publishing this study, which I will link in the description below. Again, the title of this paper is Plaque Begets Plaque. APOB does not. Longitudinal data from the Keto CTA trial. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.